Hey guys, George and Jake from EDC Leather again. We're going to continue with our little two-part series on making the pancake holster for the staccato. Uh, we're going to start out with, uh, we're going to show you how to make a neat little tool. If you were on the stitch line video earlier, we talked about the fact this is going to be an 8 degree holster. Let me show you a handy little tool that you can make anytime you're doing holster patterning. i got a little protractor here. Okay, what I'm going to take, and I know this is 8 degrees, so I'm going to line this thing up, make the tick mark and the little hole provided, and I'm going to go to the 8 degree mark, make another tick mark. Remember, I'm, I'm addicted to making two tick marks at a time. Okay, I'm going to take my ruler, I'm going to connect my two tick marks. Alright, now I'm going to grab a razor knife. Which is, ah, magically appears in my hand. Put my ruler down. Handy dandy. Eight degree. Okay, so we're going to grab a stitch trace. Last video we made a stitch line. This one here, I'm gonna, you know, this is a little cleaner. So we're going to start with this. Once again, at the top, always put down what you're making. I'm making a pancake. Eight degrees, eight ounce leather. This is just kind of a reminder of what you're doing. Uh, kind of keeps you getting trapped. I'm going to use some of the various sets of tools here today. Of course, the pencils, sharpeners, erasers, we live off them. The blue gun, I'm going to be uh, kind of just looking at it as I'm working. I don't need it when I have the trace, but you know I'm going to be looking at it. These uh, are various tools that I get from Parker Leathers holster making tool sets. This is not all of them. Uh, this is what I'm going to be using today. Um, I get various arcs, angles, and guides from these. So you're going to see me using them at various times. First one we're going to use is going to be uh, the belt, uh, belt loop tool. So, we'll set this to the side. We're going to start with our stitch trace. I'm going to confirm in my head, make sure I'm not crazy. Yep, this is about 0 0.43, 0 0.45 here. This is the thickness of my leather around my... Uh, uh, leather loop my belt slop. Okay, so I know that this is we saw in the last video We said this is our grip clearance area, and this is the face of our trigger So I don't want leather to impinge That area there So I'm going to move this here up to where it's on that line and I'm going to give myself a Single tick mark this time that is where my belt uh, the top of my belt's going to be now that handy dandy tool that we just made I'm going to take a slide that puppy onto this sheet, slide it up to where it's there. I now have an 8 degree belt. Okay, belt's going right across the face of the trigger. Uh, we're going to call that a mid ride, pretty good deal there. So we're, we're looking really nicely there. So <laughs> for retention, an accurate tracing and an accurate stitch line is critical. The next thing that your entire holster is going to hinge off of is going to be belt placement. So draw that first. So we have stitch lines, we have belt placement. With that, we can now derive a fantastic holster. The next thing that I want to do is I want to measure, we're going to use a rule of thumb measurement of one inch from each stitch line. There's one inch. All right. Now I'm going to come here, and this is going to be the placement of the belt slots. Can you adjust them in and out? Absolutely. Okay, but I think you're going to find that one inch is going to do you very, very well. The next thing we're going to do is, it is I see it all the time. Guys take and they put down a belt slot, and they put it at the same angle as the stitch line. No, no, nay, nay, we say. We want them perpendicular or at a 90 degree angle from the belt. 
So you're going to line up your little protractor with your belt. Okay. You're going to make a tick mark at the 90 degree mark. And right there where the one inch mark was. I'm going to do the same thing here. Okay, now I have two tick marks for each one. I'm going to take my ruler. Now I'm going to get some lines there. Now, when the holster goes on the belt, the belt slots are going to be perfectly aligned to the belt. Cool, huh? We're going to grab this put to a sparker tool. And you'll see it has engravings, top and bottom, so I can easily line these things up with the line I just drew. I put the top hole level with the belt, because this is where the belt's going to go through. And I'm going to put a little mark there. Just use my fingers to hold it here. All right, pretty simple, huh? Easy peasy, fellas. Using my little engraved lines, I line up with the belt again. Looky there. We have a tracing of the firearm, so we see where it is. We see where our trigger guard is, where our mag release is. We now have our belt slots and our belt line in. And really, at this point, guys, the sky's the limit, okay? It's up to you at this point to create a holster-shaped object. So that's what we're going to start on. Remember, this firearm for this client has co-witness sights that are raised up. The stitch line is kicked out a little bit here. This is really not going to affect you much on your pattern, to be honest with you. So what we're going to do is using some of Parker's tools, I'm going to start finding curves and shapes that make me happy. Okay, and this is literally, this is where you're going to define yourself. You're going to define yourself as a holster maker by the shapes that you draw. I'm liking this part of this uh, curve right here. So I'm going to make, I'm going to use it twice. Got some arc, arc starting to come up. I want to use a degrading arc. See, I'm going to come away underneath here. Now, we're just doing some shapes. We have an eraser. If we determine that we really hate this, this is easy to correct. That's not bad. I like that part of that shape. I'm going to use it again. Um... On these tools, there's a leading edge of your holster and a trailing edge of your holster. I'm going to be using the same areas on the curve. So the holster comes together. Okay? So I look at this here, and I know if I have an eighth inch stitch line coming down to here, do you see how that can cause some problems? Getting a little close there. So I'm going to erase. I'm going to recreate that line. I'm going to make it work a little better. So I'm going to bring this down here visually just a little bit. Just so I can see it. Now, let's recreate that, that line in something that can be stitched a little bit easier. Now look at that. I've given enough room for the stitching to go. We machine stitch holsters here. Some of you fellows do uh, hand stitching. You can get a lot closer, but we found it looks better to give yourself a little bit of room. So now, bottom of the holster is complete. We're done there. Let's look at the top. To start there, I 
we grab this shape right here. All right, this fella here is shooting IPDA. I'm not overly concerned. He's going to be wearing a shirt underneath it. This sight here could be sharp, so I don't want it to drag or hang on the shirt. I'm not too concerned about the beaver tail. So I'm going to get a little arc right here. Pretty pleased with that. I want to watch this right here. What I'm doing is I'm looking for something that's going to tie together pretty well. Let's throw a line in here. Okay? Now, I don't want leather to impinge into here except very close to the stitch line. So what I'm going to do... So I'm going to connect from, now I'm going to use my tools, and I'm rotating this tool as the arc degrades to find something that I like, and this is going to be you, like I said, you're defining who you are with what you're doing right here. Okay, now see these two things don't quite match up. I'm up about a sixteenth of an inch into that area. I'm not concerned about that. Now I'm going to connect the two lines. And do a little racing. And look at this shape. That's not horrible. It doesn't come down so much. We're going to maintain rigidity. Then we're sweeping up in fairly sharp arc. I'm wanting him to stay. He's going to be gripping and ripping this thing. Nope, we don't like that. That didn't work out nearly as well as I thought it would. Always keep your eraser handy. Let me take our power arm, take a take look at it here. This is where he's coming in. I'm looking to see how sharp this is, so this is nicely radiused. So I'm not going to have any problems with him slamming it back in the holster. This here is completely flat here. All right. Literally, guys, you're along for the ride. This is uh, being designed for a client. I'm going to bring that like that. Now we're starting to like the look of this. Look at that. Next thing we have to deal with now, uh, I need some pretty massive rigidity. I gain structure from leather when leather bends over and creates an arc. So on this reinforcement panel, I don't want any chance of it becoming loose and flopping over and impinging the firearm going back in. So I'm gonna take it past this bend. Here's how we do that. Use it another part of the uh, curve. Put another arc in there. Now I'm going to bring them all together. If 
For those of you that attended a boot camp, you've been through this. For those of the rest of you, this is your life as a holster designer. You're going to draw and erase and draw and erase until you find a shape that works for you in any given uh, time. So now, we're going to kind of come out and make this more like a Roman nose. There we go. Now, I'm bringing that out. Take this here. We're going to flatten her out a little bit. Now we've got a shape that we can work with. We're going to highlight that flat we're matching that angle right there there we go all right we've got our back panel done we got a nice shape here I'm pretty pleased with that let's go ahead and put the blue gun back on there again see what we got that's not bad looking I can work with that okay so now let's look at putting a throat on here we're just gonna start showing shapes and I don't want to get too much leather up here. What happens, guys, when you do this, and we see it all the time, guys will bring leather way up here on the firearm. And you've created an unsupported tunnel that the firearm can drop down on. So what we're going to do is stay fairly low and get a shape started. Okay. We're going to grab another curve. Hobby Lobby is your friend, fellas. Oh, looky there. Look at that. Nice little throat on that. Stays relatively low. All right, next thing that I've got to do with this firearm is I need to go ahead and put a reinforcement panel on it. Okay? The reinforcement panel in this case will not go below the ejection port because due to the co-witness sights, we start to deviate our stitch line for that. So this is going to be my hard stop right here, okay? And I want to support all the way out to the edge of the trigger guard, okay? So my first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take Parker's uh, belt tool. I don't want to go past the edge of the trigger guard because this leather here is bent down. So here's this. Okay, pretty pleased with that. In fact, if I can do this, I'll get my fingers in the way. I'm going to do that right there. Now I'm going to get a little bit, see how we have this curve here? I want to get a little bit more of the feeling of that going on. Remember, we always use two tick marks. I'm going to give myself one eighth inch from the stitch line. That is all. Leather gains structure when it goes over a radius and it's molded that way. That's when the leather gets structure. If you start your reinforcement panel all the way up here at the edge of the firearm, it's just a flat piece of leather stitched on the front. It does absolutely nothing to keep the throat open. When we bring it all the way over here and it's molded all the way from the center line of the firearm over, 
we're gaining structure, we're going to keep the throat open. So that's important to us. So I measure 1 8 inch off. I do that because we're machine stitchers. We need that room to run our sewing machine. You fellas doing hand stitching, you can slam this thing all the way up against that stitch line. Because y'all are amazing, and I'm proud of you. Okay. See what I got there? I have a uh, 90 degree corner. What happens on a 90 degree corner on leather is it may look really cool the day you make it. But a year from now, that's going to start to curl up. So we're not going to, that's unacceptable. So we're going to give it a little shape. That little bit of a difference over the longevity of your holster will make a difference. Ask me how I know about this stuff. Here, your leather is going to meet up. That's going to be okay. It's going to be solid there. This here is a reinforcement panel. This is another piece of 8 ounces that's stitched on top. On the order of uh, construction, front panel, the uh, reinforcement that's stitched to it, they are then glued to the back panel and stitched then, then molded. And fellas, that's a pancake holster for a, kind of an unusual firearm. Once again, uh, in the uh, notes section, we're going to give a stitch trace away to you. So it's there. You can download it. Uh, <laughs> if you'll go to the prior video on creating the stitch line, you'll find all the formulas necessary to do that. Uh, take this. Enjoy. Build it. It's not a super common gun, but you will run into these things. Uh, as always now, Jake has reminded me again because he gave me a glare. I have to remember to, uh, hey, like this thing. Um, uh, uh, join, uh, join our YouTube channel. I guess that's uh, called subscribing to it. And then the little bell is notifications. Now, when you do that, uh, and we get a thousand subscribers, I get my own unicorn and Tito Pena is going to come down and he's going to barbecue it for me because he says in Missouri, we don't know how to barbecue. It only comes from Texas. Uh, the other thing I wanted you to note, look at this shirt. Is that cool or what? That is 1950s lunchbox shirt right there. It's cool. Love you guys. Be good. I'm out.